All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about some spider codes and most importantly, talking about what might actually be my favorite spider code to this date. Now, to be honest, I feel like this is a pretty close toss up between the Manix 2, which is this guy here, and the good old Paramilitary 2, which have to be, I think, for general purpose and like general utility, two of my top like favorite spider codes or at least spider codes um, that i'm always reaching for to do tasks and while i will say so yeah as i was saying the manix 2 is the newest of these guys on the block but honestly i have wanted a manix for some time and i've handled friends manixes in the past and of course at like stores and such and i always really liked them now i will say i have handled like the manix xl primarily at stores and i think that the manix 2 xl is way too big for me especially in the handle department especially with its like curved um pinky area that just feels really awkward to me but as far as the manix 2 itself goes it is a pretty darn well-sized knife coming in just smaller than the paramilitary 2 and i think that's actually part of why i like it a little bit more than the pm2 is that if you put these guys side to side they're not much um let me see if I can get a good angle on this. They're not much smaller, or the Manix, I should say, isn't much smaller, as you can see, but it is just a little bit, I'd say maybe a quarter inch smaller. Hopefully you guys can see that knife tip there, but uh, it is just a little bit smaller. So it honestly feels noticeable to me, and I really like that fact about it. And I think that that like extra quarter inch and handle and blade length do kind of make it a little bit more pocket friendly. But aside from that too, what I do like is the ball lock um, that this has on it. And that makes it a very access like experience. Now I will say this is actually the locking mechanism is probably my favorite and least favorite thing simultaneously about this because the actual blade shape itself is you know pretty good it's a true leaf shape so you guys can see there versus the paramilitary or para family that kind of uses a more kind of a leaf shape technically on the belly but then just goes straight like has a straight spine so this isn't quite a full or true leaf shape whereas this guy does have that true almost spider coat tenacious true leaf shape on it but uh yeah so the blade shape is good the choke up is good the ergos are good but uh like i said what i really like slash dislike about this knife is the ball lock now first off what i dislike about it is that naturally with any type of ball lock like this the detent is not very strong. And as you guys probably noticed a little bit earlier, I actually kind of slipped trying to deploy this. And that's because the, the detent, while not bad, is not great either. And I'm not gonna say that this will like shake open, like it is good enough that it won't accidentally deploy in your pocket or something. But when you actually try to press out, it's a very, um, like because of this lock, the detent isn't very strong because this is the detent. So it's kind of mushy. Whereas on something like this, uh, paramilitary 2 there's a very clean break you guys can probably see here that like you have to load a certain degree of pressure before it will even open so what that means is when you do something like a flick essentially it allows your finger to build up so much tension before it finally releases opening the knife that is not existent on something like this lock where it's a far more kind of mushy detent as opposed to like a straight up you know hard solid detent so that's uh, a slight criticism but it just means that like when you're opening it you do have to be a little bit more conscientious also too the other thing is that these ball locks are and maybe i'm just very spoiled with my axis lock knives but this ball lock has always on all the manixes i've ever you know used has always felt super stiff to me and uh yeah so that is something that i don't love but as far as it goes it is very fidgety as you guys can see here you know you obviously can flick it open and closed with just the ball lock or of course you can spidey flick it and do all the fun stuff that you love to do with your knives so it is pretty cool in that regard now this one is a little bit different i did get this one secondhand off of the facebook places um won't divulge too many secrets on that so this is technically an s110v hopefully you guys can see that and this lighting is not the best but you guys can see there it says cpm s110v so this blade is the original blurple or blue purple dark purple um 
blade, but it did, or the previous owners, traded the scales for the plain G10. So normally, if you looked at a Manix that was closed like this, you would think that this is a S30V plain Jane Manix, but it is actually the S110V blade mated with the black handles. Now for me, I'm not the largest fan of that personally. I was kind of hoping for the blurple handles, but I got a really good deal on this thing, so I'm not going to complain too much on this guy. And so I might end up in the future changing it out. I don't know. Personally, as I've said in previous videos, I'm not a huge fan of modding my knives, especially if the knife in its stock form like this works and functions just fine. I think um, for me personally, like this is okay. Um, I'm not too upset with it. And once again, from a functionality standpoint, these black G10 handles work every bit as good as the dark purple or dark blue or orange, green, you know, whatever G10 handles, like they all work the same. They're all the same pattern. So just because it does look like the plain Jane S30V doesn't necessarily um, deter me. I just like the, the fact that it is S110V and that gives it a bit of an edge up for performance overall. So that is my personal Manix 2. You guys will probably be seeing quite a bit of this guy now that it is in the stable. But uh, yeah, it's a really cool blade and I've wanted one, like I said, for quite some time. And uh, I think they're really cool blades. And overall, I think the lastly, kind of closing it out, I think they're innovative too, because even though the Manix 2 is not a new design at all, it's just nice to see something that's not a titanium frame lock. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's just cool. It's cool to see and it's a fun one to use. And I've even thrown some polls out on my Instagram and a lot of people are honestly voting as their top Spyderco versus all of these other Spydercos that they would choose the Manix 2 as well. So I think it's a, a crowd pleaser. I think it's a really well-designed, kind of timeless design for Spyderco, especially considering that this is essentially, it shares a lot of properties with the Tenacious. So it's kind of like a scaled up Tenacious, of course, with a different locking mechanism and made in America out of better steel but uh, you know it shares a lot in common with the tenacious and the tenacious is a perennial cloud <laughs> perennial crowd pleaser and uh, yeah it's a good blade so anyways that is the Manix 2 and that is a short kind of brief description of or brief video of why it is my favorite spider co in the collection at least for now of course that's subject to change I am working on getting a few more different spider co's but the Manix 2 really does stand out in the collection of spider co as a whole because it is pretty unique like a lot of spider co's do feature the compression lock and for good reason the compression lock is cool but uh, I do like this Manix 2 quite a bit anyways guys as always god bless and I'm out